Hello again, and welcome back to Gun Vote, your daily update on how our federal election is shaping up. Once again, I'm your host, Daniel Fritter, owner of Caliber Magazine and complete Luddite when it comes to much of this podcasting and video technology. Hi, uh, I'm Phil, owner of Canadian Tactical Cowboy Supplies, uh, a political nobody, statistics nerd, and professional Googler. Uh, so, Dan, what's going on in the world of Canadian politics, election politics today? Uh, well, it's 1st of September, um, obviously 19 days left in the election, and uh, the Conservatives reign in a position I'd call good, uh, with the caveat that the polls are still showing some subtle differences between the various companies, Eco, Stanos, etc. Um, not massive differences, and generally within the margin of error because the sample sizes aren't huge, but enough to make you wonder if there might be um, some different results being found because there might be different results in the area and it might be procedural. Um, anyways, so to get down to it, uh, ECO showed the CPC gap widening by two points yesterday to 36% over the Liberals 31%. Uh, but as an example of some of those mild inconsistencies I mes- mentioned, another uh, poll aggregator, leantossup.ca, uh, has the LPC still leading for seat distribution with 141 seats, whereas Main Street today is showing um, quite a few. Actually, if I just check over here, I believe they were showing in excess of uh, yeah, 151 seats for the CPC. So that's the inconsistencies. Uh, but there is one universe that the CPC still does seem to have the momentum on its side. Um, but for how long remains a question, because as we've seen, uh, we've officially entered the period known as Oppo drops, where the parties all released the scam scandals and skullduggery that they managed to find on their rivals. So um, in the past, that's been, you know, peeing in mugs. Um, the prime minister forgetting he wore blackface. And uh, as of yesterday, uh, Liberal Minister of uh Heritage Stephen Gilbo um, being hoisted on his own petard for uh, not paying his provincial income taxes. Uh, somehow he's in excess of $10,000 in arrears. Um, there's a much more depressing story as well that a uh, sitting Liberal MP from Kitchener Centre, uh, Raj Saini, um, came out that there's been accusations, four uh, accusations leveled against him over the past six years of uh, sexual uh, harassment against female staffers that uh, apparently was here enough that one staffer Uh, even got as far as contemplating suicide. So, I mean, there's obviously a dark side to a lot of this stuff, but uh, interestingly in that one, um, Joe took some hard questions and he he didn't do well in that. So that's the sort of stuff that really does move the needle. So um, it's it's all relatable stuff. It it all appeals to your emotion. Uh, It makes you feel rather than think. Uh, These guys all have jobs that we really can't relate to. uh, And they almost take on a bit of a celebrity-like status in some circles. They're always on TV and, and they're so prevalent on social media. Um, so oppo drops in politics and in campaigns like this is no different than TMZ. It just pokes that same serotonin receptor that uh, that all those kind of celebrity sort of reality TV shows do. Um, but it does work. Uh, it, it's pretty un- unforgiving. It's also pretty unpredictable as we've seen in the past. Uh, it can it can either not really do much. It can be unnoticed. It can give your opponent a chance to kind of pivot uh, and do the the very common and as I'm sure many Canadians are used to hearing. Uh, we're all very sorry for what I did, and we all need to learn from it. Uh, explanation, um, and sometimes it just blows up in your blackface. So uh, we'll have to see how it goes over the next two weeks. But it's definitely we might be seeing some shifts uh, as that goes on. Um, so you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens. But uh, Phil, I think you wanted to talk about something else with this episode. Yeah, actually, well, let's let's uh, talk quickly about uh, about Oppo drops and 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 uh, everything first and just about kind of the nature of what's been happening in, in 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 this week the since the start of the election the liberals haven't had a good day i don't think they've actually had a win in the last you know in the last week that's pretty good for the conservatives but that means that but if we take a look at the seat projections and the polls they haven't really moved down that that much and that should that should give everybody some concern right but uh, the main concern, the main issues that I wanted to talk about today are two. One, the Liberals have released their party today, their party platform today, and uh, you can go finally, yeah, finally, right, <laughs> exactly. It's day, you know, day twenty, uh, almost day twenty of of of, of the uh, of the election, and uh, there's technically only nineteen days left of, uh, before before election day, and it's actually only one week before uh, before uh, advance voting. So really, the Liberals only have about eight days to actually campaign on their party platform. Um, and you can go check it out at liberal.ca. 
Uh, but there's you can go through it pretty quick because it's pretty light on policy. Uh, just some highlights. I see that they have stolen Conservative Todd Doherty's private member's proposal for a three-digit national suicide hotline. Um, it looks like that there are upwards of, it looks like $78 billion in new spending and no indication of when the government uh, plans to balance the budget. So I guess the budget won't balance itself. Um, and uh, so... What's obvious is that this is aimed straight at the NDP and the other left-wing parties, confirming that the Liberals will continue their tried-and-true strategy of promising everything under the sun to steal NDP and block support, while never actually really delivering on those promises. promises. Um, interestingly enough, there is no firearms policy in their platform. There's no firearms promises. It would be safe to assume that the Liberals would continue their 2019 promise of letting municipalities ban handguns, um, prohibiting more magazine-fed semi-automatic rifles, uh, and continuing their so-called buyback. Um, another th interesting thing to note and reminder to all gun owners is that the amnesty on the possession of prohibited firearms expires on April 2022. That's only six months away. So, um, yeah, I mean, really, really light on, on gun policy, really, really light on general policy. Um, Anything uh, anything else comes to mind to you, Dan? Well, I mean, first, I just got to, I mean, they haven't really had a, a, a legitimate public safety policy for six years now. They've just had a, a public safety campaign platform for six years. So, you know, if they're just releasing policy now, maybe they're finally catching up to their policy, not actually being real public safety policy. So they just scrapped it. Who knows? But um, in, a, in a quick glance, too, it's super light. But also, too, it's uh, I don't think I've seen a platform reference the opposition leader as much ever um you know obviously the the conservative one came out pretty early and it doesn't really reference the liberals whatsoever um there's a few slight comments but nothing so explicit as to say you know like mr trudeau is going to do this or that really um but o'toole comes up in that document quite frequently uh even going as far as kind of explicitly saying oh Aaron o'toole will not do this child care policy um which is weird it it's it's not i mean i being, I'll admit to being a bit of a nerd. I read the party policies every time they come out, just so I can be that annoying guy at the bar with his friends being like, well, actually, technically. Um, and that one, you know, that's, that's a bit of an odd one. So I don't know, I don't know where that's going to take us. Mm -hmm. um, well, like, like I said before, right, they really only have eight days to actually go and campaign on this platform. And it sounds like, and you know, we're, we're at the kind of the third mark, one third mark already of this election. They don't really seem to know what they're doing, but uh, well, we'll see. Well, I don't know. And, you know, when we discussed yesterday how there's a lack of narrative and ballot box question, right? Um, and how, you know, I'd mentioned about how it's, it seems to me like I'm not sure how they can create a ballot box question because on one hand, they have to reconcile the future with their past performance. Um, and how do you come up with a ballot box question or a policy document even? that says, here's why you need to give us a majority. Because that's what the selections, everyone already knows that they, they had a minority. So it's impossible for, they can't say, you need to just give us your vote again. They have to say, we need a majority and here's why. How do you tell people, here's why we need a majority after you just had them? Like, how do you tell people, hey, give me another majority and now I'll fix housing. Now I'll fix the opioid drug poisonings. Now I'll fix childcare. Now I'll fix this and that. Like, you, you can't do it. You have no credibility, mm -hmm. right? You had, um, you had six years to actually promise these things, and what did you do to it? And one thing, like, I've not seen anyone bring this up, but then we can move on, because I think where are we at in this? Because we're trying to be a little bit more brief than, yeah, we're coming up on 10 minutes, so <laughs> we're, we're getting there. Um, trying to keep this one shorter than yesterday's. But I think, like, one thing that no one's brought up is, is when they have the majority, and you look at the big promises they made, which they made a ton, the only one that they accomplished was legal pot, realistically. Um, and that was botched. I mean, even if you're for it, you can't say this was a good rollout. You know, the majority of marijuana being bought in this country is still being bought in the back market. After what, three years of legal market, we still have a massive, we, we haven't, we haven't disrupted the illegal business whatsoever, you know? Um, and we've just made a whole bunch of people go out of business because everyone invested in Tilray and everything else back in the day, lost all their money in the st pot stocks and that's how it went. So while well, they're making these massive overtures, if we're going to build a million and a half homes, the fuck? How? Where? What? Like, you don't have municipal zoning jurisdiction. 
you don't even have the you, you can't even have provincial jurisdiction to get these homes built in the ways that they need to. Like you're so far removed as as federal government from these policies. Can you imagine the guy that, that legalized pot trying to build a million and a half homes? Like I'm imagining like an MC Escher looking thing somewhere in the tundra outside of any municipal boundaries, and he's just gonna build a million of them out on there because you know, mission accomplished, watch this drive moment, you know, like it, it's, it's just so goofy and, and it's so frustrating to deal with, with the, the backlash on these things. People don't, they don't view the reality of it. You know, like the $10 a day childcare thing where you go, you know, where I live, we, we could enter our son and we could apply to every childcare in town. They could be five bucks or 5 million bucks. It won't matter. It'll be years before he gets in, you know, seats availability is the constriction, not the, not the price. So it's really frustrating to, to see, to see such a weak policy document come out from this, understandable though. And it's frustrating to see it be so just kind of floats by. No one going, hey, this this doesn't make this did you ever plant those trees? <laughs> <laughs> Where are, where's our two billion trees? What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's gonna be after everything burns down. That was the plan. We burn them all down in BC and then we promise to replant them. So who knows? But um so yeah, I guess that's probably it about the low. That's all I got about the Liberal Party policy. There's not, there's not really much to go on there. G, G, so. G, Dan, um, t- tell me how you really feel, right? <laughs> <laughs> I am holding back. I am holding back just a little bit. <laughs> so let's uh, let's talk about what I really wanted to talk about um, um, today, and that's uh, about the mechanics of of an election, and that what really comes down to is is ballots in boxes. Right. I mean, with elections, there is no prize for second place. You either win or you're a loser. Um, all the political parties want ballots in boxes and uh, and they want them in early. And I'll explain why in a second. So you should know now that Election Day is Monday, September 20th. Go vote. And, and you are probably you probably know that there are four days of advanced voting uh, Friday, September 10th. Saturday, September 11th, Sunday, September 12th, and Monday, September 13th. Go vote. But did you know that you can actually vote right now? Um, You can vote right now. It's called a special ballot. You can go down to your Elections Canada office. uh, It's called a returning office today uh, and request a special ballot. You can find out where it is by going to electionscanada.ca and typing in your postal code, and it'll tell you where the closest returning office is. Uh, with uh, a special ballot is an official ballot. However, you must write the name of your preferred candidate on it, right? So there's no X, right? You actually have to spell out the names of, of your candidate and then you put it in the envelope and put it in the box. Um, you can also request this ballot by mail. So if you're, you know, if, 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 if COVID's still a big concern for you, Go to electionscanada.ca or elections.ca uh, before September 14th, before September 14th, very, very clear, and request uh, the ballot by filling in the special uh, the form. You It'll be an online form where you put in all your all your personal details. You'll need to attach a photo of your ID uh, to the application. They will mail you a ballot in the mail in a couple days. And like the special ballot, you have to write in the name of your candidate put it back in the envelope, seal it, put it into another envelope called the secrecy envelope, seal it, and then you can mail it back uh, without postage back to Elections Canada, or you can actually bring it to the polling place uh, on Elections Day or one of the polling places on Advance Voting Day. So another thing to make very, very carefully clear clear to our uh, friends there who, who are conspiracy theorists, Canada does not use Dominion voting machines. In fact, no federal election uses any machines to count votes. In federal elections, votes are counted by hand, in person, by human, one at a time. It's a very, very careful process. You can watch it. You can become a scrutineer for a volunteer for one of the political poli- parties, and you can volunteer and go uh, to that formal counting process at the end of election night when the polls have closed on September 20th and they will open up, carefully open each box and an Election Canada official will pick out each ballot and show everyone who is around that ballot 
uh, ballot table and tally it on the counting sheet. If you are a scrutineer, it is your right to examine and dispute that ballot. You can't touch the ballot, but you can re register your opposition that something is not right, uh, or if you believe that some sort of shenanigans is happening, right? So there's no counting. And that happens. Sorry. And that, that, to be clear, that happens every time. Like, that's not rare. I've scrutineered, you've scrutineered. Every time you scrutineer, you come across ballots that, and it's not, not nefarious usually. It's just a, you know, someone fills in two two circles. And you're kind of like, well, that's useless, you know? Um, that doesn't help me, right? So it always happens, yeah. yeah and that, so it's, um, it's a really cool thing. It is, and that becomes a rejected ballot, right? And I've actually had the pleasure of actually being at a, at a judicial recount as well, right? Um, and that's actually really... Oh! Yeah. Yeah, because your last, your 2019 campaign ended very, very close to it. Huh? It, it ended in a judicial recount. And, uh, yep, and we were in the room um, counting. And how close, how close was that? 153 votes. So that's how close it can get, is 153 votes. Right. Like, that's why you should volunteer. That's why you should volunteer. That's why you need to vote early. It comes, <laughs> yeah. So it's, so voting early is basically Amazon Prime voting. You can go to elections.ca, register for that special ballot. They'll mail it to you if you don't, if you think you might be busy or or you think uh, you just want to get it in there. Now, is there anyone that shouldn't? Because we've talked about strategic voting, and this is something that legitimately I don't know. If you were someone that was in a riding like yourself where, where you might be 150 seats, a really close uh, close election um, and you're thinking about strategic voting you're thinking that you know hey i want to see how things are shaking up closer to the actual september 20th day um would you tell people no just just go get the special ballot and get it in there now and maybe you spend their time volunteering or something or would you say like no wait it out and see how it goes i mean if you're a if if you're in a i guess it depends on your level of engagement exactly right, right? i mean be... it comes yeah it comes down to your level of engagement right if you are a hardcore party supporter right Get your vote in now. Spend election day and 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 the days running up to that, helping your candidate win that election. If you are an unengaged voter, but you have an interest in making sure that X candidate loses, then yeah, maybe uh, yeah, take take a moment, go to check gun vote to see where what, at uh, which which riding that you want to go to, and and see that maybe there is a strategic vote that you want to put in. Oh, and speaking of, so gun vote, our website, um, Brent is back and working on that. And we're hoping to have that live by Friday, um, perhaps Saturday at the latest. So that will have content and uh, the ability for you guys to register to get riding specific information. We're not going to inundate you with emails or anything like that. You, you might get one email, realistically, like right around election time of like, here's what you need to know. And that'll probably be it. Um, because I'm not into that spam crap. So um, once again, probably we're going to wrap it up here. I think we're under 20 minutes. Oh, actually, so I, want, I, want, I want to say one more thing, actually. Oh, oh one more one thing. More, one more slight thing. Let's slide in. Do you hate being called by political parties? Do you hate being asked for donations? Do you hate being asked for your support? Do you want all the texting by Emily or whoever from the parties? Stop. Go vote. Right. The party gets a list of, yeah, they, who, of who has actually come out to vote, right? They don't know who you voted for, but they know that you have, if you've put cast your ballot, you have voted, right? And if you've pledged your support or you're, if you're a party member or an identified supporter, if you go vote, you get crossed off that list. It's a waste of their time to keep calling you if you've already voted, right? So if you want to stop getting emails and phone number, phone calls, go vote today, vote early, right? Because there's no point in calling you anymore because you've already cast your vote. So I plan to end every one of these podcasts by literally pointing at the camera and saying, what have you done to help change the government today? There's a thing you can do. Literally just go to elections.ca, ask for a special ballot, scan your, your drive, take a photo of your driver's license, your phone, whatever. Don't worry about the privacy. The government owns that anyways. If you want to get all tinfoil hatty, your driver's licenses are all owned by the government. Uh, send the photo in to the government and get your ballot and, uh, and cast that early so you can kind of move on and maybe uh, maybe help out in some other ways or just free your mind of the the weight that is this uh, election campaign. So um, do you have anyone? So uh, again, once more, uh, not that I've learned these things yet, but uh, I hear other people say like, comment, subscribe. I also hear some people talk about a bell, so feel free to do whatever those things do. Uh, Phil, do you have anything you want to probably plug CTCS again? Say, you know, hey, come shop on my store. Feel free. <laughs> Please. Um, uh, oh, this is a, okay. So secret, 
secret uh, secret advertisement promotion for uh, for our gun vote voters. Um, check your emails on Friday. This Friday, uh, we will be having a Labor Day sale. So uh, if you want to hold off your near purchases until Friday, you there will be an across the board sale on Canadian Tactical Cowboy Supplies, CTCSupplies.ca. Your fine Canadian pure of it. gun parts and accessories. I need a new bipod. I got a gun that needs a bipod. <laughs> I need time to shoot. That's what I need first. Um, for me, you know, once more, uh, if you want to support what we're doing here, head over to calibermag, caliber dot, calibermag.ca slash subscribe. That's what it is there. And uh, get yourself a subscription to Caliber for the year. You have six issues. Uh, we're up to 64 pages on the next one. Hoping to exceed that, actually, as we enter year 10 next year. So um, please feel free. Head over there. I'd love to have you guys. Uh, and obviously, we'll probably have, uh, I suppose, post-election coverage, actually, in the next one, because the next one comes out after that. So um, as Phil said, go vote, 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 um, go vote early, vote often. Uh you can do it really easily today, and it'll help us all out. So uh, have yourselves a great uh, Wednesday, apparently. Um, and there is 19 days left, so we'll see you again tomorrow. Adios.